Welcome back in, everybody, to a uh, Monday edition of Birds 365 of an Overreaction Monday. Joined now by Jeff Kerr from CBS Sports. Jeff, welcome to the show, man. How you doing on this Monday morning? Probably better than John is because John got to watch that 15 minutes of whatever that was Nick Sirianni was doing yesterday. Boy, you know, typically I'm a frequent questioner. I was just sitting back and watching that, and I was particularly paying attention to two Eagles executives that spend a lot of time around Nick Sirianni and their reactions, and uh, they weren't good, at least one of them. Um, yeah, I don't know what to make of it, but it ain't good. That's what I said. I, I that You know, I, 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 what are your thoughts? Because – I'm still trying to figure out what I saw. Yeah. So when, obviously when Nick was talking, I was interviewing AJ Brown at the time and, you know, we're talking about Nick's actions with the fans and all that stuff. And, you know, AJ Brown was another player that defended Nick. Uh, Devonta Smith did, Lane Johnson did. Um, Jalen Carter said he didn't see what happened. But so when we got back to our, to the press box, I started watching a news conference and like two minutes in, I'm like, what is this? Like, what are we doing here? It, 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 to me, from just two minutes in, it felt like he was using his kids to shield questions that may come. His yeah, way. I know. That's how my, I don't know if I took it that way. Um, if you, if that were, and Mike, Mike Sealski wrote a good column and that was Mike's take. Um, I don't know if I took it that way. Cause he does it all the time. It's annoying to be honest and stop doing it, Nick, but uh, he's not going to listen to me, but um, it's annoying. If it did, if he was trying to deflect, it didn't work. He got asked every relevant question and he didn't handle it. Well, um, I, I didn't I, like, I, I didn't like when he said, well, you guys make it a story. No, Nick. You make it a story because you don't score in the first quarter. The Eagles haven't yeah. scored in the first quarter in the five in the first five games for the first time since 1934. If you look up the 1934 Eagles, there's a guy named Sweet Hansen on there. That was their oh, first. Sweet Hansen. Yeah. Yeah. Their yeah first and the other thing is, Jeff, he's not fooling anybody. Jalen Hurts wasn't even asked about it on the on-field interview, and he brought up the slow starts unprompted. On the field, before he even had a chance to digest the game, he brought up, we got to start quicker. We're struggling with the with the slow starts. Like Nick acts like it's this created talking point by the media. Dude, we haven't scored the first quarter in six games. And you know what's sad? There are Seven, people. if you count the playoff game. Yeah, yeah, yeah two true. games last year, five games this year. Um, Yeah, but here's here's the number. Um, Here's the numbers. Um. Five games, so five drives to start. 16 plays for 12 yards, three three and outs, and an interception, and one first down. And that's what we're talking about. And he's trying to say, well, what does that have to do with the defense? Well, well I didn't bring up the defense. Nobody did, else Nick. brought up the defense. <laughs> we're talking about the offense, the slow starts of the offense. The and side of the ball that you're supposedly the genius on. Yeah. Well, that's his expertise on that side of the football. That's supposed to be. And he's trying to play, oh, the defense played pretty well. And that's another conversation because they did, but shouldn't they against the Cleveland Browns and what, what they're rolling out there these days? So I'm not sure how much you can take from that. But the whole thing was just so bizarre, Jeff. I mean, he's yelling. He's taunting his own fans. He's taunting Browns. Cleveland Browns, um, he's bringing his kids up. Um, I don't know. I, I, you know. Hey, other people have to diagnose, <laughs> diagnose breakdowns, but my God, I, I, what, what there, there's a certain, whether you call it no selling, whatever you want to call it. Um, he gets booed all the time. Um, yes, people were, trying to start a fire Nick chant. I'm sure that's not uh, the best time of his life. Um, he's talking about the the players coming to him and saying, we need the old Nick. And, and Brandon Graham said he did that. And Jalen Hurts said he did that. So there's something to it. But what does that even mean? The old Nick stomping on the, you know, stands and jumping, yelling at Indianapolis fans for, you know, some 
knucklehead firing Frank Reich or screaming at Kansas City fans who didn't even know he was a low level assistant. What does that what 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 does that mean, the old Nick, Jeff yeah. Kerr? Yeah, you know, maybe the old Nick is the new Nick in I wish I was good enough to play in this league and taunt. So I'm gonna do it as a coach, a successful coach. But again, I, I didn't like last year when he did the thing with the Chiefs fans. I don't know what happened with the Colts fans, but again, John, it's back to that whole creating a Versi thing. Well, you're creating it. You're doing this to yourself. Yes, it's self-inflicted adversity. Yeah. I, I mean, if there's one thing I've I've learned just as a media member, there's I, I swear you can mention your political views over crapping on Philly fans because that's just a lose lose situation. The fans are always right. I mean, the fans tr- <laughs> the truth the fans truly believe that yeah. this is Nick Sariani's offense. They yeah. truly believe that, and uh, you know they're, they're responding to. I'm like, no, it's not. But you can't tell them that. Yeah. I mean, look, well, I just got that question. Yeah, who's making the game plan? No matter and, how many times you say it, it, yeah. it, it but we're wrong. So, well, Jeff, Jeff, let me run this line of thought by you, and it comes from one of our great viewers here, and, and he brought this up yesterday, and I'm like, that's a great thought, right? Nick Sirianni, who's essentially become villain number one in Philadelphia, and that didn't just start yesterday. He said villain Nick activated, and yesterday he said. You know, I wonder if Nick is playing into the villain role and almost almost embracing that he will be the lightning rod to take, don't blame my offensive coordinator, don't blame my defense, put the hate on me. You know, put the hate on me. Don't put it on the quarterback. Don't put it on, maybe he's embracing that a little bit and, and create, I mean, look, here we are on Monday morning, the Eagles squeak by the lowly Browns and all we have to talk about is Nick Sirianni chirping at the fan base. I, maybe it's working. I, I, I don't yeah, know. I think it's yeah, a fair maybe, point. You're right. You know, he's right, too. Maybe that's the game plan. Instead of, let's talk about how bad we were against the Browns. I mean, he's like, hey, already everybody already hates me and wants me fired anyway. What do I have to lose? You know? Yeah. Good rally him. I, I mean, you know, uh, Devonta Smith practically said yesterday, look, you know, that's that's how he is. It's, it's fine. Like. You know, they seem to be okay with it. And I'm Brian Combe, like if the players are okay with it, and I get I have to be, right? I mean, I don't have to like it, but I'm not in the locker room. I don't have to deal with this guy every day. No, I mean, I yeah. I think I think he's a clown, but who cares what I think? At the end of the day, yeah, it only matters what the players think of him inside the locker room and the organization. Now, Nick does embrace that role. That's why he tries to protect um, his assistance, and I've talked about it as him being the lightning rod. I talk, he's the Roger Goodell, the mini Roger Goodell of the Philadelphia yeah. Eagles. He's there to take the hits. Um, and he says he can handle it. Um, and I don't doubt that part of it, but I don't think Jeffrey Lurie's on board with it. Um, I kind of felt bad for his kids yesterday that they were smack dab in the center of that. Yeah. I yeah. Think, well, I, I don't think I, if I was a head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles, I wouldn't anyone knowing who my wife or kids are. Yeah. I'm with you on that. I'm, I'm with you on the privacy part of it. But, but, you know, I will say this is not just a Philadelphia story. I mean, no, you can go not. on national media outlets, it's all over the yeah. place. Um, it's Nick's the number one on. story on CBS Sports.com right now. It yeah. Is. I mean, and it's on all yeah, the outlets. And you've it's seen it locally, you know, as I brought up, you know, our buddy Mike Sealski wrote a pretty scathing column. Um, I like, I don't think Jeffrey Lurie's on board with this. So while I think, yes, that's part to the commenter's point, that's part of it. And Nick has, you know, spoken uh, many times about he can take it and trying to deflect from players or coaches. Um, that's fine from a personal level, but this is a business as well. And I don't think Jeffrey Lurie is going to take well to taunting Eagles fans after a win. No. That's specifically. I mean, th- th- now that's maybe just- it wasn't. I don't, I don't know. Do we know that those were Eagles fans? It might have been some weird Cleveland fan who got yeah. decent seats. Well, that, I don't know. The- 
I, I've heard both. I've heard it was at, directed at both sides. So, I, again, we don't we don't know, but, you know, I know a couple people that sit around there, and they didn't even notice it when it happened. They said he was yelling. They, a couple of them said he was yelling something. They didn't know who or what he was yelling at. They just thought maybe it was him, but I mean, it's just a bad look in general. And uh, Yeah, yeah I, but, well, I can't imagine what the national people are going to say about yeah. it. I, it, I I guarantee there's probably an 8 a.m. meeting with Jeffrey Lurie about everything yesterday. Nick, you can't do this, man. I mean, he was putting a lot of people in uncomfortable situations yesterday. Yeah, I, well, I don't care about us. Who cares? But um, no, 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 no. And, I'm not and, talking and, about. And I'm talking about way, people. The organization. You know, people. A lot of people said it was uncomfortable. I, I wasn't uncomfortable at all. I was taking it all in, like it was the reboot of the surreal life. I, I, I was I, like. I I'm like I, I feel terrible. I missed the the thing live. I'm like I'm, well, I'm like this is this is freaking great for this my is reality TV for Johnny Mac. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, but Mike Sielski had the greatest question: Why are they up here? Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> and, and, you know, and then Nick went down. And he played the hits about Jamestown, New York, and football family and how much i love he got very emotional and then he lost the train of thought and had to ask mike what was your question again um (laughs) why why, why are they here nick and i'm 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 looking at other guys and i'm like everybody's like what the freak is going on here um i thought cj garner johnson had the best oh cj was very uh 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 nick sirianni pro nick sirianni yeah he I puts mean, up with a lot of shit that you guys don't see and i yeah. agree with him i think he does yeah cj was awesome talking about nick sirianni um yeah everybody no doubts him I'm, I'm just gonna read the one quote everybody doubts him and the people that don't doubt him is us i don't think you guys know how much shit he takes on the daily and we gotta back him up for it I'm proud that he's my coach and nobody else is my coach. That's, that's a, pretty that, emphatic. That's a yeah. pretty good quote. Uh, and, you yeah. know, it's it's telling. Like, Devonta Smith even said, look, you know, even with the fans booing him, he said, well, you don't do your job around here. You, That's what happens, and you deserve it. And, look, these guys get it. I, I think these guys get it. It's it's clear they support their coach. I never want to hear the all the Eagles, Nick Sirianni lost the locker room. That's just factually inaccurate. Well, here's my here's here's how I phrased it. And I want to run this by you, Jeff. Uh, run it up the flagpole. I I think Philadelphia, for the most part, not everybody, but for the most part, is tired of Nick Sirianni, and I think Nick Sar- Sirianni is now tired of Philadelphia. That's where I am. I, I think it's a good take. I, I really do. It's you know, it's been four years. It's been a long time. You know, Nick goes. If you're Nick, you're thinking, I took the team to the Super Bowl. I took the scene of the playoffs every year. I've been a head coach. I, you know, it, it's clear Nick Sir, Sirianni reads what's said about him, or he has a <laughs> he does he has a burner account. Like I remember when I said Nick Sirianni took the team to the playoffs all three years for the first. Well, it doesn't count because fourteen make it now as opposed to twelve. And he wouldn't have made it when it was twelve. Like actually, he would have made it when he was twelve because they were the six seed. But you know, let's you know not let's not get facts in the way of good narrative here. And, you know, it, and last time I checked, it was 14 for everybody. Like, I, I, again, I could think Nick Sirianni is the biggest clown on the face of the earth. I'm not going to deny his success. I'm not going to deny his accomplishments. But I'm sure Nick reads all that, says, feeds all the criticism about him. I mean, I wouldn't, would you be shocked if he just said one day, I'm out? Oh, no. I mean, that's what Doug did. I could see it after this season. Because uh, I don't think they're winning the Super Bowl. Um, and that's why I bring up the second part. I think he's tired of Philadelphia. Um, and I think at some point, you know, you go, he goes to Florida all the time, too. Same as Doug. He might go, all right, I'm out. I'm going to Florida. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm going to sit on the beach with my family. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I could, I, I, in fact, I think ultimately, Everybody gets, you know, the old Bum Phillips quote, uh, two kinds of coaches, them that's hired and them that's fired. Everybody's got a shelf Being a coach in Philadelphia is a very tough job. It it is. And, you know, it's a media-driven city. 
fans are as passionate as anybody. It's one of the best cities to be a coach in. But we're seeing, too, there are coaches that win here, and they get criticized like they're the worst coach ever. Yeah, and well, yeah, but the, the now I there's different, as you know, tentacles of it. Yeah. But I don't think anybody down there on a daily basis that covers the Philadelphia Eagles has a bad relationship with Nick Sirianni. I don't think anybody. I don't think so either. I mean, like, you know, the uh, I was actually kind of surprised. I met him at the owners' meetings, and you know, formally met him. He he knew who I was. He knew who I worked for. Was talking for a little bit. I'm like, look, I mean, the guy clearly he didn't have to give me the time of day, left or right. But you know, I appreciate that. You know, I I, I look up his history too. I knew I knew he played wide receiver in Union. I know he only talks about Larry Garris. So I knew he was his coach there, but it's like, well, the guy just loves football. I just don't think he likes everything that goes around it. No, but but the only point I say that that media driven, yes, there's different. WIP is different, and yeah, the it, it, yeah, and WIP Hoskins, and which, yeah, uh, you know, Cilio gets mad at me for saying um, that. To me, is different than like what he goes through on a daily basis. Um, and I think for the most part, no matter who he thinks they're fair, um, but then you have the larger thing. And 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 the WIP stuff will fuel, you know, whoever on ESPN as you right now it'd be Mike called him a clown this morning, you know. Yeah. That's where that stuff comes from. Um and I think he's just tired of it. But that's just my speculation. You know what? I want, to go, I want to go back to the Lurie point real quick because Jarrell drops us a hundred dollar super chat. So one, I got to get to him because that's that's massive love right there, massive support. But he also brings up a good point. He's the one who's been bat at the bat for Nick Sirianni. Jarrell, thank you, brother. He says everyone's screaming, "Fire Nick! Fire Nick!" And he's not supposed to say anything. Then he starts barking back, and it's a I didn't problem. Say he, can, he can say whatever he wants. At that, villain Nick activated, and if Lurie didn't like it, wouldn't Nick be gone? He's been like this the whole time he's been in Philadelphia. He's not wrong about that. Nick has always been this emotional, uh, big figure uh, that likes to to do some of these goofy things. Uh, I can't. I can't dispute that. I mean, wouldn't Lurie have moved on already if he didn't like it this much? Or if he didn't like it now, you made your bed, Jeff. You got to lay in it now. Yeah, I, I mean, Lurie never fires a coach in season, so he's not going to do it there. I mean, look, I, I'll just say hard chip, but you know, only one game left. But yeah, yeah there's one. They were eliminated at that point. I, I'm not talking about like a Robert Sala or what looks like. No, like he's not. He's game. not firing anybody week five. But, but by the way, everybody loved it, and I know it was a playoff game. I know it's a different situation. I knew it was an NFC East rival, but everybody loved it when Nick was yelling in the camera, whatever he was yelling, when they were kicking the crap out of the Giants in the first – who, by the way, were shouldn't have even been in that game. But that's beside the point. Um, you know, it's – winning cures a lot of things, but now it's just – Cures seems, everything. Yeah, but now it seems like even when you win, it's – it's you know all right, Nick. Well, I, I say winning. I don't mean winning a random game against a terrible opponent. I mean winning consistently cures everything. Yeah. Um, which they did for a very long time. Which kind of mass. And there were people that complained, but anytime you have that run of success that they had, it's tough to complain pretty consistently. Um, and now they're not having it. They're just an average team. And they're an average team that everybody who likes the team seems to think shouldn't be an average team, which is the real problem. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of fans finally got the realization they are an average team. I don't think they have. That's the point. They, they for the most part, most of the fans think this is a really good team. And I don't know if this is a really good team, Jeff. Yeah. Um, it uh, should be offensively. It's not. And, and I, maybe, Fred Johnson can't be the left tackle of this average team if we're going to go. Well, exactly. Well. Now you start talking about is is Goddard going to be out three games like like AJ? I don't know. Maybe is is AJ? Uh, uh, excuse me. Is Jordan Mylotta going to be out significant? It certainly looks like he's going to be out for a while. Um, 
at least a few games in the best case scenario. And all of a sudden you're back to the same situation where, all right, Grant Calcaterra had a great game stepping up for Dallas Goddard, but now people know he's out there. If Dallas isn't out there and they say, oh, well, we got to pay some attention to this guy. And, you know, what are you going to do? Are you going to, are you going to move Mackay Becton outside? Or are you going to go with Fred Johnson? And by the way, neither idea is as good as Jordan Mailata, which is kind of the point. Yeah, um, it's, this team isn't deep. It's, no. It, they can't afford stars to get hurt, and stars have been hurt. I mean, Jalen pointed out yesterday, we've only had one game where all our guys are together. That's real. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's part of it. Um, and they are a different team when AJ is on the field because they can default to what they did yesterday. All right, let's yeah. just throw it to AJ. Um, but you can't have a consistently good offense and Lane called it constipated, constipated. Yeah. but which is a great quote. But yeah, if you is. look at the numbers after the game, it's a pretty solid effort and the four minute offense. That's the one thing they're good at when they get a chance to close games, you know, and they put the running game with Jalen hurts into the mix. They're tough to stop. I got to give Jalen a ton of credit. I mean, didn't turn the ball over, made good decisions with the football, was good against the blitz. Um, you know, it's, you can tell he's more confident when his guys are out there. It's Jalen Hurts played a really good football game yesterday. The Eagles do not win that football game if Jalen Hurts played like he did the first four games. Uh, yeah, well, you know, not turning it over is big for Jalen Hurts. I mean, yeah. it doesn't matter. 11 and 1 when he doesn't turn yeah. the ball over. That, that's that's a and stat. what was that nine that stops a nine consecutive game streak yeah. you can tell there the there was a sigh of relief on him yesterday like you know him like just you listen to him in his press conference he just sounded like okay like i'm not gonna get this today or if i get it it's gonna be a positive thing and look, look it, it jalen was really smart but the, there was a ball he threw I think he would have forced it in the past and he threw it out of balance. And I'm like, okay, that's, you know, he's not trying to do too much and not trying to do too much worked very well for Jalen. Yeah. And I thought he didn't, I thought he didn't, you know, sometimes you worry, is he just not going to take shots anymore? I thought he still picked his pick and choose his moments with shots. I, I, I said the same, Jeff. I was, I was pretty happy with Jalen Hurts' performance just that. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, he played well. The offense I thought was, you know, okay, you know, some people are out there. You should have beat up on this team a lot worse. But that that Browns defense is underrated uh, right now for, for, with, with I think, among the Eagles fan base. That That's a pretty good defense. And Jim Schwartz does a good have, job. They have a Super Bowl-winning defensive coordinator, let me know. Yeah, well, duh, right here yeah. in Philadelphia. And even with the missing players, I mean, they played good. Rodney McLeod, obviously, still. Rodney was great. Player. Yeah. He's other than other than the Rodney Smith touchdown where he ran into the end zone and had no chance at tackling him, I thought Rodney was pretty good. Yeah, well, yeah, well, I mean, he's 34. Yeah, he's, I mean, that's that that into it. he's like their fourth safety. Um, you know, they're so banged up. But, yeah, I mean, anytime Miles Garrett is out there and Jeremiah, Owosu Koromoa, that's pretty good, those two guys. Um, but, yeah, and, and they had the number one defense in the NFL last season. I said not only number one, they were number one since 2014, Jeff Kerr. They were really good defensively last year. Yeah. Um, and, and, and they'll probably be really good defensively again when everybody gets healthy, you know, Nick Sirianni talking about Denzel Ward too, in the midst of his breakdown, uh, that guy's really good as well. They, they, they have talent all over the field defensively. It's like, you know, a AJ said it best. Hey, they get paid too. Yeah. That That's a John McMullen saying. He must be talking to you a lot. They get yeah. paid too. Yeah, it was good to talk to AJ this week, by the way. Yeah, he uh, um, um I think he liked my question yesterday when I asked him about it seemed like early in the game you guys were trying to get the deep ball going. It obviously wasn't connecting, but you were trying it. And I said, You like just take us through the process. He got into you know detail about hey, look, you know, I gotta do this right. I had to make sure I do that right. Oh, AJ's great, man. Wait, wait, wait until the cameras go away, the TV cameras. Oh, yeah. Go. Oh, he was great yeah. after that, too. Yeah. It's um, and he will he will tell you a bunch of stuff. Um, and he's really good about 
you know, putting things like that in context about, you know, other, whether it's other cornerbacks, other receivers, uh, really student of the game. Um, and as I talk about all the time, he's the best player on the Philadelphia Eagles, regardless of position. And to me, it's him and Lane. They're the two. Yeah, I think Lane's number two, but I I, I think late AJ is AJ's the best football player the Eagles have, and I think it's pretty evident by by the difference when he's out there when he's not out there. I mean, that's a tough defense to get 116 yards and a touchdown against. He did it. Yeah, um, and so there were positives. Uh, uh, we'll talk about the deep. I mean, there's nothing to talk about much other than what does it mean. But I will say this. Why the hell did the Eagles wait so long to pull the trigger on Cooper DeGene? Yeah, I know. Oh, what 20 a game days in training camp. Let me remind you about those 20 days in training camp. Everybody like, well, Devin White's the starting linebacker. Devin White's yeah. <laughs> Nobody gives a shit about you know, why, why did it take so long for them to get to Cooper DeGene? You there, saw there, the difference. There's a reason why, John, you and I always – when we were writing day 10, day 11 observations, we're like, boy, these are pointless at this point. <laughs> uh, this is why we say they're pointless. <laughs> well, I, you know, he's a rookie and that plays into it. Obviously, if a vet misses 20 days, nobody's going to care of an entrenched guy. So there is that part of it. But, I mean, uh, all right, 20 days is 20 days. And then he was back. And we got to wait to the bye week? Uh, yeah, I, they could have used I, them in week four. Yeah, I think they made a mistake waiting that long. You see some of the juice he has. Really good blitzer, and Vic likes to blitz off the slot as as, the run, as a run defender, even more than a pass uh, uh, in run support, more than uh, just you know third down, third down obvious pass situation. But he's got the athleticism to do it. Um, he showed that a little bit in the preseason game. He did play against Minnesota. He should have started week one. It was good enough to. Um, you know, Ed Kratz uh, asked me yesterday, hey, how many times did they blitz the Jeep? Do you have that? And I said, you know what, I'll look it up. And blitz three times, and he got two pressures. Yeah. It created – look, the Browns offense isn't good, but that that's a weapon that the Eagles can use. The rest yeah, of and there's going to be hiccups, but you know, if you started them earlier, you get over them a little bit more quickly, um, and that's where you want to be anyway. It's just one of those where I was like, "Come on, what are we doing here?" Um, and Abante wasn't playing well, so that factors into it. Uh, but it took them too long to get there, but they've gotten there now. How much they had five sacks, ten quarterback hits. Obviously, they had six sacks coming in. How much, you know, Deshaun Watson holds on to the football, all those injuries on the offensive line, added by Nick Harris getting hurt early in the game. So they were down both their centers. Yeah. How much do you take that seriously? I think I take more seriously the fact that someone like Bryce Huff, who, by the way, John, do you happen to notice um, Stance went back to four point? That? Yeah, that, well, that's another one. I mean, he had a couple quarterback hits. He had a half a sack. It's just getting more explosiveness. All the, I mean, look, it's it, like AJ Brown said, those guys can pay on the other side too. Yeah, a little bit slow for Vic Banjo to get to where he should have been with a, a couple particular players. Um, but I'm still not in love with that defensive front, and I thought it was going to be the strength of the defense. And they showed some life yesterday, though. They did. The interior definitely did. I mean, more with um, Jomo. Is he better than Jordan Davis? <laughs> well, he's a better pass rusher. Thomas um, Booker's a better pass rusher than Jordan Davis. But I mean, what what does that mean? I mean, you want to put Moro Jomo in that five man front? See how that works. For Jordan Davis, I mean, I, Cleveland, yeah. Cleveland struggled to run the ball yesterday. I thought Jordan Davis played a solid game yesterday. 
Well, I, I, I don't know if he's playing. I don't think he's playing well, to be honest. Well, no, I, I don't but, think he is either. I mean, it's a different role than Moro Jomo, which I talk about all the time. I mean, you don't you don't want somebody that the, the Eagles did that with Javon Hargrave, who's a really good player in 2021. They tried to play him at nose tackle. It didn't and work that out went, that well. That went about as well as 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 expected. So, I mean, Jordan's just got to perform well in his role, and I don't think he has. Um, but that doesn't mean to have anybody else that can play that role because they don't, which is part of the problem. And then the Kobe Dean, now it's twelve tackles. Yeah, twelve tackles. I love the Kobe. I talked to Kobe up all in the summer. Boy, he's bad in space, Jeff Kerr. Very bad. Very bad. Um, Dechecko and I were like, oh, look, there's the Kobe Dean again, not doing what he's supposed to be doing. <laughs> I mean, and and uh, how long do you keep going with this if it continues like this? You go with Trotter? Or Ben. I don't yeah, care. Yeah, yeah, or Ben. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm saying ben plays. You, he, he plays. I'm saying, do you try? I think you uh, try. At what point do you say, all right, this is not working? They were forced to try Ben in week 16 last year, and it worked. Yeah, very small sample size. I don't think they're going to try, but, boy, he's got he's to start playing better. And it's not the time you say, well, the defense didn't give up a touchdown. Yeah, but if you look at the end, of, and I'm going to be interested to see the PFF grades today. I'm, I, I don't think he's going to have a good grade. It's just my assumption. But that's just after the first watch live. Um, but yeah, I think people see twelve ta- twelve tackles. He's active. I don't know. You know, Pierre Strong's gashing you. The four string running back. Yeah, yeah, Pierre Strong. Oh, that man. one. Can you imagine that what one Nick tri- Chubb would have done to the Kobe Dean. A healthy oh Nick God. Chubb. I don't, I, Jeff, I don't even want to think about that. <laughs> Pierre Strong. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, Pierre was pretty strong. I, I was pretty impressed with him to the point where uh, who was the third for Foreman, Dante Foreman. Dante Foreman. Yeah. I was like, why don't you put strong back in there? He's killing people. Uh but Kevin Stepanski, if this were Brown's 365, boy. But all I can say about Kevin Stepanski right now, he's from St. Joe's Prep and he's got a nice beard. I don't know what he's doing. I know a couple of people on the Browns beat that were at that game yesterday, and I, I think they're getting tired of writing about <laughs> are the Browns good bets to Sean Watson because it ain't happening. He doubled down on his quarterback again yesterday. Well, there's nothing he can do from that standpoint. It's not like he can bench him. Uh, I would think he's not permitted to bench him. I don't know, but I would think. They keep he's- joking he's going to get two coaching staffs fired. Stefanski and whoever replaces him. Maybe. Although I would think if they want anybody of any substance, and maybe they don't, but I would think they would say, hey, guess what? I'm moving on from the quarterback. Uh, I, I, I have a running joke about the Sean Watson I won't share on here, John, but I think you've heard it before. I don't know. Not Nothing can beat BLG's take on Deshaun Watson. Which right one's now, that? Uh, right now he's probably a better person than he is a player. Oh, uh, it's around there. It's just, he's just as bad of a football player as he is a human. Yeah. Right. It's same thing. Inverse. To, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's pretty much this. the same thing. This yeah. is one of the biggest positives for the Philadelphia Eagles yesterday. The commanders lost. The Cowboys got absolutely annihilated. The Cowboys stink. They the stink. Cowboys are brutal. Oh my God. Did you guys hear Jerry yesterday after the game? No, I didn't. He did not. It. Oh, so no. he was asked about. I, I know we doubled down on Mike McCarthy. Yeah, yeah, about potential changes. He goes, "Do I look like an idiot?" I'm like, I would have said yes. You do. You're the only I, owner that talks after games. I know they put out. Uh, there's been a they they show their attendance. You know, it's a huge stadium, and they blocked I, out the score. They blocked out the score. Yeah, that was AT&T so Stadium put that out, to be fair. But, but, by the, the way, this is what fans yeah, it was know, know by yeah. controlling the narrative. Yeah. It's just teams for you. But it was AT. yeah, I mean, they're inter- intertwined. Um, but, yeah, I thought that was funny. No, I say, I, I was talking about that, Jeff. Um, 
I think the four biggest point differential teams in the NFL are the, the NFC, NFC North, North teams. They're, they're Every awful. single one of them. And and by the way, um, I don't. I think there's only been one NFC North game the entire season. Yeah, the Vikings beat the Packers. That's it. So they all got to pay play each other starting and next week. Starting next um, week, Detroit and Minnesota's next week. Yeah. Um. So they're going to beat up on each other. I would think. I think the Lions are still the best team in that division. So do I. Yeah. I do too. But um, they lost Aiden Hutchinson. Yeah. Oh man, um, that was gnarly. That, that was a nasty injury. I'm like, oh. By the way, I, that, guy, I, by I, 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 I had I picked him to be NFC defensive player, NFL defensive player of the year. Uh, Boy, he that was, was on it. He, he was on his way. Yeah. To, to do I, that. I, I was about to declare victory there, and all of a sudden he has that horrible injury. So. I didn't even um, want to write about that. My overreactions, like how gruesome an injury that is. I oh, it's awful. I it just I, I decided to write about Derek Goff has the best two game stretch for anybody in NFL history, and he does. Yeah, that's going to be interesting because it's going to be Brian Flores against Jared Goff. I I have a feeling Jared Goff is going to come down to earth next yeah, week. Yeah, at least I'm somewhat. Advantage, advantage flow. Um, at least somewhat, but we'll see. But uh, uh, Detroit has more talent, so. Their weapons Rather are more incredible. Talent. I, I, yeah. I said this team is the best team in the NFC if Jameson Williams becomes Jameson Williams again. Yeah, yeah. They, have, they have a ton of talent. So, yeah, they're, they're, you know, they're... but I think there's going to be some hiccups for Jared Goff when he sees some of the stuff that uh, Flores is going to roll out there. You think um, Dan Campbell enjoyed that game a little too much yesterday, you know, being his old team, old team he coached, old team he played for? What happened last year? Well, Dan, I mean, Dan's in the same lot in life as Nick Sirianni. He's got all this success for a team, and even more so because a team that typically didn't have a lot of success, whereas the Eagles have. Um, and, you know, fans are running him out of his house out in Detroit. Yeah, but I think, it's, I think it's for other reasons, though. Uh, Dan Campbell, they're ready to put a statue up for that guy. I, 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 they weren't had last to sell his year. House. Yeah. Jeff, did you see house. that story? Yeah, he had to sell his house because people were, were, were going to it and shit. I mean, it's, you know. Dan Campbell's the type of coach I'd love to play for. He, By the way, nuts. if Dan Campbell ever caught one of those people, he'd beat the, beat you the know sh- what out yeah. of him. <laughs> so yeah. Well, he'd bite, he'd bite his kneecaps. <laughs> that, yeah, that dude, that dude is jacked. So That's you better be careful thing. when you're messing with Dan Campbell. But I, I, to, I can, to Dan Sanders' Campbell, point, the Eagles should win this division. It's a crappy division. Stinks. Um, everything is there in front of them. The NFC North teams are going to beat the shit out of each other. You know, is this a situation where you can slow play it, slow play it, you know, have some hiccups, play your best down, down the end of the season, all of a sudden you wake up one day and say the Eagles are relevant again? Yeah. Yeah. Um... They take care of business next week. They take care of business. Oh, the Giants were worse than the Cleveland Browns. That was torture. Yeah. I don't know why. The worst Sunday night. Like, oh, by the way, the Bengals don't look too great either. No, they don't. Giants no. have a good defense. I'll give them that. They, they really do. Um, I'm scared. Well, Lawrence is great. Brian Burns is starting to wake up. Um, Thibodeau yeah. didn't even play last night. Well, Thibodeau's on IR, so he's going to be out yeah. uh, for at least three But they still games. have Aziz Ujiari, so... Yeah, Oshilari played well last night. Um, uh, Andrew Eric Thomas did. looked bad against Trey Hendrickson. He got hurt, too. Yeah, he did. Um, so that's something to keep an eye on. But, boy, I mean, that's a bad football team. They might be worse offensively than Cleveland. I don't know. It's close, but they oh, might be. Daniel Jones is their quarterback. I don't know where Malik Neighbors is, but. Well, he was he at he was at a Travis Scott concert on Wednesday for concussion. Peak uh, wide receiver one behavior there, Jim. <laughs> uh, do you hear how pissed off Brian Dable was over yeah, that? I heard him say, "I'm we'll talk." Much as he could to just not throw that guy under the bus. What? What? Uh, with all due respect to Malik, and I don't know Malik neighbors from Adam, but uh, you know. Yeah, I saw him at Devontae Smith last week, and I asked him about the concussion. He's like, oh, I was fine. I was fine. Like to, I mean, I can't, you know, what do you expect these guys to do? Yeah, he said he did all last week. He just kind of sat at home with his family. He said, you know. 
So I, I mean, they can't pass the concussion protocol. That's He's not out in the building. <laughs> um, but I mean, they got to live their lives, and if they feel fine, I'm not going to kill the guy. Um, I ain't can't believe neighbors was was at that concert. That's just me. Yeah, I mean, I, I yeah, I don't get the NFL's concussion protocol. No, oh, I don't man. think Devonta Smith gets it either. He's like just trying to explain like what he had to do during that week and he's just like mm, i spent time with my family I'm not not really allowed to go to the building so i mean i i, I, I mean it, it, it's there. like it's lane's got four documented concussions and he's back the freaking next day at practice you know wednesday a couple of days later and Devonte can't practice and you know he's fine I, 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 you know, obviously there's medical test and baseline. Uh, Lane, like, like, all I had to do was get into contact practice on Friday. I don't play. <laughs> yeah. I mean, right. that, that, somebody's, that's going to be a scandal one day because obviously quarterbacks seem to get through the, the protocol. Well, quicker. we saw what the Bills did last Sunday. Oh, here's the smelling salt. Yeah. You're good. Yeah. They tend to get through, yeah, especially right. meaningful quarterbacks tend to get through it a little bit easier to say it, uh, to put it mildly. Um, but yeah, that's going to be a scandal one day. Mark my words. I wanted to um, slam my national media cohorts this today because I, I decided late last night to watch a couple games, a couple of the, a couple of the condensed games, and I watched Baltimore, Washington. Oh. Washington, they played so hard. They played well. They proved they belong. No, they didn't. Baltimore kicked the crap out of that. What game were you watching? The, the garbage time touchdown? Yeah, people look at the box score and say, yeah, yeah. It was, pretty, it was close. Uh, but a lot it was of times. close, but, you know, again, it's like we said with the four man offense. Uh, Baltimore decided to uh, not collapse like they usually do, um, which they won't do as much this year because they have Derrick Henry. Yeah, Jeff, we got to run. Uh, final thoughts on, on the Eagles game yesterday. What are, what are your final takeaways uh, before we let you go? They won. I mean, <laughs> they won. <laughs> it's better than being two and three. Yeah, it's better I mean, than should, losing. Yeah, and this win crap, next week. <laughs> in this crappy division, just winning is going to take a long way. You beat a bad football team. You did what you're supposed to do. It wasn't pretty, but. They're all you got to do the pretty. same thing on Sunday. Beat another bad football team. Yeah. Yep. And, you, and you know what? Um, I love the Bengals. I love Joe Burrow. I like a lot of guys on that team. I don't think they're a good football team. No, they're not. Are they? Are they? Are they the third game? Who's after the Giants? They're, Jacksonville. It, it, no, it's Cincinnati. Oh, oh Cincinnati. Then yeah, Jacksonville. 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 Right. Then yeah. Dallas. Then what? Washington on the short week. Yeah. Now Dallas is a terrible uh, football team, and yeah, Washington on a short week. That Washington game, boy, I mean, they got a chance to go on a big run here, even yeah, if really they win do. every game 20. You, you know, John, we were kind of talking about that this week. Like, yeah, they can really turn things around. They may not be pretty when they're doing it. I mean, but I, there's a realistic chance they could be 6-2. and two. Yeah, definitely realistic. I mean, look at their next couple of opponents. Jeff, I mean, thanks- five, five and three the minimum, Xander. I'll say that. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Jeff, thanks for joining the show, man. We'll talk to you again next week. All right, brother? Yep, sounds great. Thanks, guys. All right, great stuff there from Jeff Kerr. Good stuff uh, from Jeff. John, we're low on time. We got Chris Franklin coming up in nine minutes, but I got a bunch of super chats, and I want to rip through them. Uh, A couple good takes. Appreciate everybody in the chat uh, today. Let me roll through a couple of these. Brian Garner checks in on on October 6th, watching Cleveland versus Washington. I texted my Eagles group chat and said, there's no way the Browns should be close next week, but somehow it will be. That's the tale of the Philadelphia Eagles, Garner. (laughs) I appreciate the super chat. James Carver says, no one complained and actually celebrators when players have done same. BG telling a kid about the whip that ass. JC going off and NOLA, just like J-Mac says. Fans blame coaches and overlook players. Media chooses who to like versus the uh, clown. I think that's a fair point. Next, well, obviously. Uh, yeah, I, I, I do think, you know. They should be held to a different standard. Though, but, right? but, I mean, yeah, coaches are held to a different standard than players. I mean, first of all, they're older and more experienced. and have a different job description, you know, players are going to talk trash and, you know, some of the coaches now aren't older than BG, but you get the point in general. Um, You know, there's a little bit more of a decorum, say to a coaching position than a, 
player talking trash, which and players get in plenty of crap for talking trash. You can do it in a fun natured brand of Graham type of way, or you can do it in a, you know, spit type of way. And if you do it in a negative way, you, you're going to get shit as a player. No question about it. Yep, no doubt about it. Let's move on. D Hughes checks in. D, appreciate you checking in, man. Your first super chat on a live stream. Thank you for joining in today. He says, even though it worked, I wasn't a fan of that audible at the end of the game. If AJ doesn't catch that, it's third and 11 with the clock stopped. Risk reward in that situation doesn't feel sustainable. John, your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I think the opponent makes it a little bit easier. But yeah, I didn't think it was a good decision. Um, but I, I ultimately, I think even if you got to punt the ball, Cleveland's not going the field, the length of the field with Deshaun Watson. But yeah, I get your point against a, a good NFL team that that's a really bad decision. So um, despite the outcome, which I talked about, good decisions don't guarantee good outcomes. Bad decisions don't guarantee bad outcomes. Occasionally. You pulled a horseshoe out of your ass, and the horseshoe was A.J. Brown, and he made a big play, um, and it worked. But it probably wasn't the best uh, decision in the world. Let's move on. James Carver checks in again. James, appreciate it, brother. Let's pump brakes on DeGene, too. Can't have it both ways. Cooper played against a bad offense. He did well, but he wasn't playing a top team, which is fine to point out when criticizing offense and coaches. That's a fair point. I mean, everybody else said I, I already said it, I, yeah. but he's better than Avante Maddox. And Definitely. if he would have started earlier, I said, as a matter of fact, there's going to be hiccups. Be prepared for them. Um. And he's not going to look good at times. Now, you you have this stretch where maybe that factored into big stinking. Hey, we got the Cleveland Browns. We got the New York Giants. Um, Cincinnati, depending on the day, you know, might be a little bit differently. Um, but, yeah, you got no NFC North teams coming up. Like if this were Jared Goff and the Lions – the way Jared's playing right now, oof, boy, there'd be some angst. But you don't have that on the schedule right now. Yeah. Big loss last night for them with Hutchinson. Boy, that was an ugly injury. <clears throat> and Jarrell checks back in. Appreciate it, Jarrell. All the support the last couple of days, man. It means a lot. Thank you. In my opinion, no disrespect to media. Folks wanting to want be wanting the team to be perfect. Jalen never make a mistake. Nick to be a choir boy and never show emotion. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The game is full of emotions. I can only speak about myself. I don't care. I, I've never seen a perfect football game in my life. I've never seen a quarterback that didn't make bad decisions from Tom Brady on down. It's about consistency. It's about making more good decisions than bad decisions. It's about getting making the right decision more often than not, you, the more you do that, the better you are. Um, as far as Nick, yeah, I, you'll never hear me. He should be a choir boy. Um, like I said, it's better for me when he acts like the way he acted yesterday. Yeah. Be well, honest. Jalen, Jalen mentioned he wanted them to be himself and they talked about it over the bye week. You know, maybe that was part of part of Nick yesterday kind of, embracing that who he's been in the past and, and not tempering it uh, anymore on the sidelines. I just think it's a problem for the Eagles. I think it's a problem for his bosses when he taunts his own fans. Yeah, I agree. I, agree. I, I, I don't even think taunting of the Cleveland players. I'm not, I haven't even brought that up much because that doesn't matter as much to me. Um, you'll hear some, hot takers uh, bring it up and say, oh, you can't do that. You got to be to quorum. But I think that's that would be my argument as a media member. I would say, I say this all the time. Fans put us into a, a, a group and say, oh, the media says, the media says, the media says. There is a big difference between one media member and another media member. Yeah, that's true. And they're not, we're not having meetings at Chicken and Pete's every week to come up with some kind of narrative. I don't talk, I love Sealski. I don't talk to Sealski about what he's going to write. He doesn't talk to me about what he's doing. Jeff McClain doesn't talk to anybody about what he's doing. 
Zach Berman doesn't talk to anybody about what he, he's doing. This nonsense that we're creating some kind of thing. We all develop our own opinions and we give them to you. It's not a group. It's not a monolith. It's just each of our individual opinions. Nobody does a better job at that than John McMullen of anybody on the beat. So good, good job by you, uh, Johnny Mac. M. Martin checks in. I'm out on the Kobe too. I saw a play where he had watched and dead to rights and just whiffed inexplicably. Any chance they call the one in five Browns about old friend Jordan Hicks' experience and better fit? I think. Well, uh, Jordan's hurt right now again. Yeah, he didn't play yesterday. Yeah. yeah. He, you know, at his age, I would say no. I mean, you know, and obviously, I don't, I don't know what contract he's, he, he played pretty well in Minnesota uh, for a couple years. And then he signed with Cleveland this offseason. Um, great guy. Uh, still, um, still a decent player at his age. Had a really serious injury last year. Scary one. We talk about Aiden Hutchin, Aiden Hutchinson. He had to have emergency surgery um, uh, because he had some weird um, compartment syndrome um, where his swelling in the leg just expanded so much. You got just a, you think about it, it happens all the time in the NFL. You get, you get a bad bruise on your leg, and then all of a sudden it just started swelling and swelling and swelling. He needed emergency um, medical care, surgery, um, and came back from that. But I don't think he's been the same player since he came back from that. So, and and just the age uh, in general. Um, he's thirty-two now. Yeah, I, I I don't think that would be a bit. But um, good player, good guy. Yeah. Appreciate it, Ann Martin, for checking in. Prince Swayze says, Dean realized he needed to cover the tight end and started looking around, feeling extremely nervous. Get him out of there. Help me, please. Prince is done with the Nicobe Dean experiment, John. I think a lot of people are moving. Well, I think, and, and, and by the way, if the Eagles get to that point, I, I think it's going to take a long, they're not getting to that point this week or anything, but. I do think they're high on Jeremiah Trotter Jr. and Ben Van Sumeren. So they would try that first before they – and then that's probably an off-season decision. And maybe Howie uh, reevaluates and says to himself, um, we got to put a little bit more into this position as far as assets go. Who knows? Yeah, we'll see. One more super chat to get to. Uh, two more. 99 says, good to see Nick pulling out his Britney Spears, shaving his head next week. He'll be wearing a skirt, getting out of his Jeep and flashing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, well, I don't I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. But it was Nick surreal. Uh, um, I, you know, I don't want to call. I think he's tired. I think he's tired. I think you see it in his eyes. I think he's tired of the shit he takes, but that's sort of, he, he also has seized that mantle as people point out. I don't think it's about being the villain. I think it's being, he doesn't want it. He doesn't want his guys to take shit. So he takes the shit. Yeah. He's become that lightning rod. Gerald says, thank you for your feedback. J Mac Lucius checks in. Good morning, guys. Michael Clay for head coach. Wow. He said that last time on the post post game. Well, I, 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 you know, that's like the third straight game they made a big mistake on special teams. Yeah, it's true. I don't, I don't, you know, Mike, Mike's a great guy. Um, but yeah, this is not the time to blow the horn for head coach. I mean, Miles Garrett's jumping over your field goal protection. Yeah, can you put that on Michael Clay though, or is that just Miles Garrett's a freaking? No, freak? you can't put it. But I'm saying there's. Three consecutive games where there's been a big yeah no there has that now that's a trend for sure no doubt yeah. let's get to our commercial break we got Chris Frank and we got to get to our man Chris appreciate everybody in the chat today for the support a lot of good uh, membership comments so appreciate that before I get to our break let me tell you about our great friends at BetUS go to betus.com.pa check out the promo code on your screen right now YouTube one fifty and you get a hundred and fifty percent sign up bonus on your very first deposit and you get a hundred and twenty five percent 
on your second and third deposits, uh, all up to $2,000. So go to betus.com.pa. That's betus.com.pa. Birds 365, back in three minutes with the great Chris Franklin. If you missed any of today's show on the Jacob Media channel, listen to the podcast on your way home. Available on YouTube, Apple, and Spotify.